Hi guys, this is Janet Wright and this is a recap video where I discuss what I did in today's mini triplet group energy healing and today's date is July 25th 2017 and it's Tuesday so it's the today was the third of the three healings in the set which is why it's called a mini triplet group healing set and um, today's healing had a theme also a lot of times they don't they don't really have a coherent theme they're just awesome <laughs> I mean they're good for a lot of different things but there's not like today's theme is but um, the 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 Sunday uh, healing had a theme of safety simplicity and something else I forgot stability safety simplicity stability um, so that was lots of useful info um, in that recap video the July 23rd one um, and today um, today's healing had the theme of clarity direction time management and self-awareness <laughs> So clarity, direction, time management, and self-awareness. And self-awareness in that sense of like inner presence, you know, where you, you know, you know you're clear where you're headed and you can manage your time based on, you know, where you need to be headed. And then um, self-awareness, meaning you, you have sort of a, an internal coherence and you're your tone that you're set at is not sort of the sum total of what everyone wants from you. It's like you've already gotten that cleared out and y it, your direction is coming from within you um, and your higher self, um, not sort of a, a mob effect <laughs> that's happening in your space. So um, I really liked today's theme. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so I have um, both a diagram and the AccuDoll today, um, so lots of demo tools for you. <laughs> um, this is in my backyard, this is just one of the fences in my backyard. Um, it's pretty late in the day so it's very sunny, So, um, but this is in the shade. So, The healing was much earlier today but then I had, uh, you know, appointments individual appointments to do and then I had to meditate more so that I could have rockin' energy for the video. So, um, today's beverage, since it's very warm out, it's like 87 degrees or something. Um, I'll put on the screen what that is in Celsius, sorry. <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head. There is warm out. So, um, today's beverage is like cold water well, cool-ish water plus some cranberry juice. Uh, so anyway, um, oh, and like the other two healings, uh, this healing was for 42 people in eight different countries and including seven kids. So hi kids, hi. And um, hi to all the participants. <laughs> and hi to all my energy geeks that watch the videos even when they don't get the triplets. Um, but of course, you know, you energy geeks are totally invited to, you know, I mean, of course you have to pay, but it's really not much. Um, and you pay on my website and uh, then you too could be a participant. <laughs> uh, there's just payment deadlines you have to pay now by the Saturday before. So that's like six days before is the deadline, which, I'm really digging. A little bit less last minute chaos for me. <laughs> it's just really good. Okay, so the first thing that we did is a nice red grounding. Uh, red is a nice color for the first chakra at the base of the spine. Uh, the first chakra generates uh, courage, safety, and abundance. Um, so very useful stuff. So red, uh, red grounding means, here I drew a little diagram. So. Uh, here's my diagram like so these are the feet this is like usually I draw a diagram of like the body and around the body like all the chakras and the aura around the body but this time 
I drew, you know, what happens at the level of your feet and below, <laughs> okay? Just because I think sometimes, you know, it's good to think about that too, of course, because your grounding is so important. So um, here's your feet, <laughs> artistically drawn, and this is your grounding right here. This, And so this goes high up. Um, it could go as high as your waist or your first chakra, or it can go, for me, I like higher um, up to the third chakra, which is for productivity and getting stuff done. So, you know, that's so useful. I figure bring the grounding up that high. So it goes that high and it's as wide as your whole aura all the way around. So behind you, in front of you. So it's like a giant waterfall. And so you release energy through it, but you also can bring up earth energy. Um, so it's like you soak in this really comforting earth energy and you can tune the exact vibration by mentally picking the color with your intention. So you don't have to visually see color, like perfect clairvoyance at all. I mean, even if all you see is black when you close your eyes, it doesn't matter because you just set it with your intention. You know, when I first read, uh, well, actually in this lifetime, when I first started meditating regularly, I didn't even know you know, I didn't think I was supposed to see, you know, I just closed my eyes and, you know, worked with my mind. I didn't, I didn't think I should visualize anything. So I didn't feel bad about it, you know, that I couldn't visualize. Um, but later when I realized, okay, visualization is real and their clairvoyance is real, I still, I didn't see anything. All I saw was black, you know, for a long time, but I, I just did it on an intention level. Um, Cause it does take a while for the sixth chakra to, to get cleared out enough and functional enough for you to see effectively, even like halfway murky shapes that are useful to you. Um, so please don't, um, don't let the darkness, don't let the, you know, the appearance of, you know, all black freak you out. You know, it's just visualization is sort of a, it comes later. Once you get really present and you, you know, clean everything out, then your visualization becomes practical and very useful. But until then, just go with your intention and your intuition and your gut feeling, all that stuff. Anyway, so here's the feet. Here's the grounding. Again, I said grounding goes up high. So it goes up to her third chakra right here, right? But it goes down, all the way down to the center of the earth, right? And so she's releasing, you know, and she wants a big downward flow. So what I did is I, you know, helped everyone to have the red, a red grounding of earth energy. Um, and I helped everyone bring up earth energy all the way up as high as their grounding um, just to be like comforted and soothed, made the grounding nice and wide for everybody. And um, there are some new things I did, um, which I want to draw on here. It's like you can have like a rug. It, it looks like a rug. It's not a rug, but you know, an energy rug, I guess we'll call it. But you can have a rug at the bottom of your grounding that kind of stops up the suction. So it doesn't, you know, the earth, center of the earth can't suck down everything real fast. So you don't have that huge waterfall. So let's see if we were to draw on this little diagram, like say there's a rug right here. Maybe it's like mostly obstructing, you know, here's the rug, right? So here's grounding, here's the center of the earth, here's your feet up here. <laughs> so um, if you have a rug right here, you may not notice it unless you look for it. And it's just, you know, probably somebody else's energy or some energy blocks that didn't quite finish clearing, didn't quite get down there. So um, you just kind of look to see if you have a rug that's stopping your downward flow or making it a lot less strong. And then you just, um, you can imagine rolling it up like you would a rug on the floor and just hand it to your angels. Or you can, you know, set it on fire with gold fire and just melt it away. Or, you know, one of those two options or just, you know, gold light and just melt it away. Sometimes I like rolling it up and giving it to the angels. Sometimes I like the gold fire, but, you know, whatever. It depends on your mood. I think you should do what's fun. <laughs> Don't be too serious about things. Um, okay, and then after we got rid of the rugs <laughs> at the bottom of the grounding, which is, it's just basically energy blocks that it's like you almost don't even notice them, but it's like because they're right on the bottom and they mess with the, the suction and the, the force of the downward flow. Because you want a lot of force pulling downward because that way it just helps you to let go all the time of like baggage that, you know, you like 
you want to release, but if, if you don't have that strong flow, you might not. And so then it's like, why am I not over that yet? You know? So anyway, um, so then after the rug removal <laughs> at the bottom of the grounding, then we did, um, there's another thing with the grounding, a way it can be blocked up that you may not even realize, is it's like you have this multi-story building in your grounding. So rather than like, if you imagine you're a copy of your grounding out in front of you, like a 3D copy, like a miniature 3D copy, it might seem kind of stagnant, you know, so it's not like this huge waterfall. It seems like maybe a room that you could kind of just stand in, you know, like it's, it's like there's a roof and walls and that's why it's not just this giant downward flow. So let's say it's like a building and there's a roof and there's multiple levels to this building and it's really just a bunch of energy blocks but it's sort of i like this way of imagining it so it's like let's say you know on this let's say the roof is like energy blocks from your mom you know it's whatever she was worried about when you were growing up let's say right and then this level is energy blocks from your dad right and then maybe this level is energy blocks from your friend who's going through a lot and you do love her very much let's say and then this one is energy blocks from a coworker that's like always dumping on you and complaining let's say okay so let's say that. So here are your feet, you're trying to ground and release, and rather than this huge waterfall, you feel like it's just like, kind of like a stale bunch of rooms, you know? And so you just imagine the building and all the levels, and maybe you have a level for each sibling that you have, like a brother and a sister and you know, all that. And of course the good news is you can just melt it away with gold light. So you just have to take a little bit of time to do that. and. Um, it did take a little bit of time for me to help everyone to melt away their buildings in their grounding. And again, it's something that you may have been working your grounding for a long time and you just never really saw it. But then once you kind of look, you're like, wow, you know, it's really there, you know. And that's, I call that upgrading your abilities where, um, and I have a webinar uh, on my website. It would probably be on page... <laughs> It's either on page one, two, or three of the three pages of free meditations on my website. Uh, um, it, it says in the description, upgrading your abilities. Um, they all have long descriptions. <laughs> but anyway, the idea is that you can always get better with your intuition, with your clairvoyance, with your um, intuition, clairvoyance. I guess that's pretty much it, you know, with with all psychic abilities, you can get better. It's just not like, you know, Shazam, angels make me better, and then like, now you're an expert. You, know? <laughs> you have to gradually, you know, keep clearing energy, keep getting more present, you know, take good care of yourself, get enough sleep, folks. I keep hearing on surveys like, oh, I only had three hours of sleep last night. <laughs> so I am sorry that you guys are missing sleep. Um, I've certainly been there, but thankfully not lately. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I keep digressing. So anyway, just melt this puppy away, you know? Um, yeah, I don't have a tissue with me, so I'm just gonna get it all over my fingers. Just so you can see, you know? So this is what you would do, just with gold light. You just kind of melt it all away. So then you get your nice, strong downward flow back. Cause you know, like we said, you may just subconsciously be storing people's problems and worries and fears in your grounding, but you didn't even know you were doing it, but it doesn't mean you're not doing it. <laughs> you know, that's the whole thing. Like our consciousness is really a, a pretty small, like my fingers are blue now, your consciousness is a pretty small percentage of, you know, all that you're up to on a spirit level. And so that's what personal growth work is, is you're always looking within, you're always willing to learn new things and surprise yourself about, you know, all the silly stuff that you're up to. <laughs> and then, you know, you gradually heal yourself so that, you know, so that your spirit actions are coherent with your conscious goals. 
you know, of clarity, direction, time management, and self-awareness. <laughs> so, um, anyway, this would definitely help with clarity, you know, to get a much stronger downward flow and get all the, you know, your loved one's problems out of here, um, cause it'll help you release more. And so like sort of the fog, you know, of all these energy blocks floating around would just reduce greatly because you'd be releasing. So you may do that and then feel an immediate effect or you may, it may just take a while to kind of release enough, you know, with this new flowing grounding to, to really feel different. Um, that's, I think that's why I've been always wondering why some people feel the healing right when it's happening and some people feel the healing like an hour later, two hours later, three hours later, but they really feel it, but it's like, it just kicks in for their consciousness at a certain time later. Uh, some people f feel it a lot, but the next day. Um, and I'm thinking part of that is this whole grounding effect, like that a lot of these healings help with the drainage, you know, to release energy blocks, you know, in the grounding and in the bottom of the aura so that everything can release downward. And it could be that uh, people have enough energy blocks here that it just takes a long time well, several hours or a day for all enough energy blocks to release so that their spirit comes in much, much more. And so then their productivity and their clarity and their enthusiasm and their energy level, you know, lift um, or increase, I guess. But anyway, so hope that makes sense. So we got rid of the multi-story building energy blocks in the grounding and we got rid of the rug looking energy blocks at the bottom of the grounding and we had big red groundings um then i helped people um i just you know kept looking at sample people keeping that theme in mind of clarity direction time management and um self-awareness so um fourth chakra um, the, a sample person that my angels picked needed some help healing their fourth chakra. So for me, that means everybody needed that help. Fourth chakra is in the center of the chest. It has to do with self-love, that balance of like, okay, what other people need and what you need, you know, and being aware of your needs and taking them like they mean something. Um, enthusiasm, motivation, so that's fourth chakra. So my sample person needed help with their fourth. So that means everybody needed help with their fourth, which, you know, that obviously is great for everybody. So I helped heal the, unblock the front and the back. And I have a whole playlist about healing the fourth chakra if you want to do that. But, you know, right now you could just use your hand, you know, gold light with your intention, open up this hand chakra and then your fingertip chakras. And then just, you can even use both hands and just aim all that gold light right at your fourth. So that, um, you know, mine right now, it's... It's a little blocked. It's not like totally blocked, so the energy does go in the front, but it's like it's like this translucent kind of set of energy blocks that are filtering it, you know, with like problems. You know, just random work and personal life problems. So you may have that too. So you feel okay, you just don't feel fantastic. Um, cause this is definitely the feel good chakra. So the more you heal the chakra, the more fantastic you feel. So sometimes when I, when I make these videos and I'm like, hi, hey! yeah, it's cause my fourth is really, really, really unblocked. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just, um, the, like these little filtery kind of energy blocks that I have right here. They're kind of like a white, almost like coffee filters, you know, but like a stack of like, 10 of them so I'm just melting them so now there's only five and I melt more now there's only two and then I melt more yeah so now they're gone so then I could still find new things though I could still find more energy blocks like like in front here there's more so that pathway of the energy coming from my fourth layer in you know the whole pathway counts so like there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four energy blocks along that pathway. So I just comb through that and melt them. And that just makes it easier for the fourth chakra to do its work of drawing the energy in and then sending it out the back and pulling it around my fourth layer and bringing it back in. So it brings it in, draws it out, and then wraps it all the way around my fourth layer. Um, my three video set, seven chakras, aura layers, flow which I'll probably link at the end of this one. Um, that came out about a month ago, let's say, four to six weeks ago. Um, anyway, that explains a lot about 
the flow directions and all that. So anyway, we did fourth chakra healing for motivation, self-love. Um, and then we did seventh chakra, heal, uh, seventh layer healing. Because my sample person needed that too. Um, oh yeah, then uh, a lot of people, their seventh layer was okay up here, you know, so it wasn't like big rips and gashes. But then, this, so I was just healing up here. Um, and then the angel showed me a different sample person that did have a bunch of gashes. So I spent more time with this whole top of the aura. Um, so, you know, it's like first layer, this is my first layer from my head to here, this is my second layer, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, so this is the top of my aura, right? But if I had a bunch of rips and gashes, which at the moment I do not, but you know, it happens, um, then it's like the whole thing kind of deflates, you know? So it could be a gash that goes in seven, six, five, four, and then I feel kind of crappy or just seven, six, and I feel maybe overwhelmed, but not crappy. <laughs> just depends how deep it is. But anyway, so I, it's like, if you do it on yourself, you could just comb upward like this, or you could imagine a copy out in front of you of that top part, you know, from the top of the head to the top of the aura, you know, and just comb upward with the gold light or, you know, wash it this way, whatever you want. But the idea is you don't want the rips and tears. Most often the, the rips and tears, they happen when someone throws energy at you, which is explained in my two video set, Energy Wax, part one and part two. Um, and in that context, wax is spelled W-H-A-C-K-S because it's like whack, whack, whack. Someone's throwing energy at you. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I healed up here. I healed a little bit all the way around, but if someone had like a unique space for the whack, like maybe down here, I might have missed it. Um, but you know, in the interest of time, I did what most people needed, which was like rips and tears all around here. Cause most often the rips and tears are like right around the head, like, you know, like top and back right there. Um, so anyway, and if you want to check yours, just imagine a whole version of your mini, a mini version of your whole aura, and then just comb through the whole thing, particularly the outer layers, because that's where the rips are going to come from, you know, they come from the outside in. So you just want to make sure you don't really sense anything like that. And if you do, and, and just for good measure, like get rid of the hardness, because hardness is sort of the precursor to having a tear because hardness is just you and your energy blocks, like you're resisting problems or whatever. Um, you're resisting a little bit of somebody's energy, but then if someone throws energy at you really forcefully, which is a whack, and it hits like a solid chunk, then that's what makes the tear, uh, which is explained in Energy Wax Part 1 and Part 2. But anyway, so I just combed through that not only to heal the rips and tears, but also to get rid of the solid chunks because if you keep a lot of solid chunks, that's why you, your aura keeps ripping. I mean, because you can't stop people from throwing energy at you. I mean, I wish you could. <laughs> but you can keep your energy flowing well, so then that minimizes the damage that can happen. And then you can regularly check. Okay, so then uh, my notes are down here. That's why I keep looking down. Um, then that sample person that I had, his aura looked nicer at that point. So then um, I did the top and the bottom of, uh, oh yeah, because I did the top of all, all the layers, which I already told you, and then I also did the bottom of all the layers, because the bottom of all the layers is very important for the grounding. Because like I explained in a lot of these videos, um, like say these are all the you know, first layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer, fifth layer, sixth layer, seventh layer, right? Seventh layer is the outermost layer, generated by the seventh chakra. So, you know, your aura wraps below your feet like this, right? So I wanna make sure all this is flowing and beautiful so that everything releases freely. Because a lot of times people have a lot of energy blocks right at the bottom of each layer. So then it's like, you know, Mm. So then it looks more like this, you know, a whole bunch of energy blocks and maybe they're a little wider. So then the problem with that is it's like, a, you know, plug in a drain, a, like a plug in a tub drain, 
so it it stops up the flow it makes all this resistance and and then you just don't let go of stuff so there that's what the energy blocks could look like so um, I just visualized you know any energy blocks for people that they were ready to clear at that time um, in that bottom area under the feet and I helped everyone to clear those so that the flow could be nice and strong with these gone um, then oh so for the theme clarity direction time management and self-awareness it's like for direction it's sort of like I like to imagine that everyone has a unique spiritual well it is a fact that everyone has a unique spiritual path in this lifetime so my path is different than your path even if we both like talking about auras <laughs> even if we both like healing our chakras we're not the same and so um so you have a unique path you know like a spiritual path that you've created for this lifetime uh that you planned with your angels before your life started in heaven uh before you know conception and everything it was all planned out very thoughtfully you had lots of angel help so it's like a path right you can imagine it like a road that's just for you and um the idea is obviously you want to be on your path you don't want to like get so confused and lost and turned around that you kind of take a detour <sighs> and then um you want to sort of have clarity you want to be able to kind of ideally see ahead um, that's why faith is good like having faith you know like okay I'm just gonna let my angels heal me today I don't know what the heck's going on but I'm gonna let my angels help and heal and guide me today you know that's kind of going on faith that intention level seventh chakra and that kind of means that your path maybe is all cloudy in front of you so you have no idea you know what it is really you don't have that sense of this is where I'm headed but your angels are walking you forward on the path anyway and, and you are moving forward. It's not as fun as if the clouds go away and then you can really see and be reassured, but you know, it's a lot better than staying stuck and you know, not making progress. Um, so that's how faith and intention are very important. You can walk forward even without clarity, but clarity and direction is way more fun. So um, I just had everyone imagine their unique spiritual path, like that road out in front of them that's just for them, and ask their angels to clean it out for them, like a little bit ahead of them and around them, so that, um, you know, because there can be like foreign energy, like people that you know, or um, like little beings, like usually I don't like freaking people out about that but it's like you know not every spirit in this world is an angel you know there are uh, beings that are not angels that might you know just kind of cloud your clarity and focus you know if your energy is mixed up with theirs so um, you know and that's not something to be frightened of it's just uh, the more you are present and you clean out your energy then the less that's an issue right um, so um, so, you know, I just had everyone ask their angels to help them clear out anything that was clouding their sense of their, their own spiritual path and their clarity, their sense of direction of like, okay, what is my path? What is the forward movement? And you don't have to be able to boil down, oh, my path in this life, my purpose in this life is blah, 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 blah. You know, you just have to have some sense of maybe what you're working on this and next month or maybe what you're working on this week or even just today you know sometimes that's enough to kind of root you and and make you feel like you know where you're going um and again it could just be subconscious like i am open to being on my spiritual path you know i am on my spiritual path today you know and, and that puts you on there you know even if you don't have conscious clarity um a lot of people they just kind of flounder you know because they don't have conscious clarity but I would say you know start start with baby steps you know just do it on an intention level you know I'm letting my angels help me to move forward on my unique spiritual path BAM and spiritual path for me my definition of that is like your whole life you know like what you're meant to learn and experience in this life so it includes you know <laughs> like enjoyment stuff like going to movies you know it's not like okay only the spiritual stuff you know <laughs> like watching my video you know for me you are a spirit so 
all aspects of your life are spiritual. You know, finance, what you do with your money, um, you know, your time at work is spiritual. You know, even if you don't like your job, it still counts. You know, you can ground and breathe and try to be more present um, anytime. It all counts spiritually. Okay, so we had the angels clean out everybody's path uh, so they could have a little more clarity and direction. And then, um, oh, for time management and self-awareness, we did seventh and third. So seventh is like identity, uh, goals, and then third is, um, which is you know below the sternum. The sternum is this bone that goes this way, and then at the end of that, that's your third chakra. So um, third chakra is productivity, taking action. So your goals and your actions. So you want them to kind of be on the same page, you know, rather than like, oh, I'm just doing random stuff and I'm wasting time on Facebook and I'm doing whatever and it's not at all what I wanted to do today or I meant to do today. I'm just, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing, you know? That's the opposite of what we're trying to achieve, right? So I healed everyone seventh and third at the same time so that, you know, just to help people to have more mindful action. So you can do that too, you know, with one hand, send gold light into your seventh chakra in the top of your head and then with the other hand, you know, in front of your third chakra, which is just below the camera for me, but anyway. So you can just think, okay, you know, I wanna be able to manage my time. I wanna be able to make mindful choices and, you know, take action in a way that supports my goals. You know, I want my actions to support my beliefs. How about that? Um, and then we also did a blanket exercise and I, uh, I may link that. I'm just looking at that bird making that sound. <laughs> uh, we did a blanket exercise. I walked everybody through it on a spirit level of, you know, you make a blanket out in front of you and you put onto the blanket energy blocks that are in the way of your I think that one we did was for clarity and direction um, so you can do that too um, with that with the whole theme clarity direction time management self-awareness you can just write down those words clarity direction uh, time management self-awareness and just you know make a blanket out in front of you and just pile onto it and your energy blocks that you're ready to release right now that get in the way of that stuff and then just melt it down with lots of gold light. You know, you can imagine gold fire, gold water, maybe you have a gold hose, gold flamethrower, and just, you know, relax, wiggle your toes, stay present, and just let the pile get smaller, 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 smaller. And then if there's anything left over, just wrap it up in the blanket and give it to your angels, ask them to take care of it for you. And I have a fabulous 12 minute video that I made a few weeks ago that does have the blanket exercise in it and I'll link it at the end of this video. It, it starts with the name clear your energy blocks then replenish your energy blanket exercise angel healings gold suns. How about that? I said it right. Then after the blanket exercise we did um, I had a sample person who had a lot of energy blocks right here at the top right at the first layer of the aura. First layer is created by the first chakra that has to do with courage, safety, and abundance. Um, and the first layer, you know, all the layers, they wrap all the way around, right? So my sample person that the angels picked for me to look at right then, um, they had a big energy, bunch of energy blocks right here, right above the seventh chakra, which, you know, could be like fears because it's in the set first layer. Could be fears, it could be money problems could be uh, worries, you know. Uh, so, so we cleared that out. <laughs> I love demoing with my little doll. Um, oh, and we cleared it out at the bottom too. So very top with gold light here and then very bottom here. So because you want it, you want the layer to be able to drain properly, right? And so you clear the energy blocks down here and then it goes whoosh, all the energy blocks you know, can more easily fall down all the way to the center of the earth. Then I did a little more with energy blocks, clearing energy blocks out of the grounding, which here's grounding, right? <laughs> so 
I, we already cleared all that stuff up there. Those energy blocks were gone. And then I just double checked here because you can get like a big mountain of energy blocks right here. And so uh, I just sent lots of gold light to melt those away. So, and you know, I had to do that multiple times in the healing and that's just the way life is, <laughs> you know? Um, you're releasing and then it just, some of it doesn't release quite right and so it stays in your grounding and then it, a pile develops. You know, that's why sometimes you feel great and then you feel not so great. Well, that's one of the reasons why. So, you know, you can just make a copy of your grounding out in front of you, a miniature 3D copy and just comb through it with gold light from your hands and your fingertips and just melt away. Imagine the pile of energy blocks and just be patient and just melt them away. If they're not melting right, you might have like a rug underneath them, like we said, you know, flat energy blocks right at the bottom. So you can use gold fire to get rid of that first. And then the pile melts better. That was fun. Um, then we did um, above the top of the aura, just a teeny bit because, oh, I started using the sample person. You know, the angel suggests who's the sample person like at various times of the healing. So like all sorts of people are sample people. And um, uh, the sample person for a couple times towards the end was this 15 year old who, there are actually two 15 year olds that got this healing. <laughs> both uh, young women and one of them knows about the healing and then the other 15 year old oh, she knows about it but she really could care less <laughs> her mom her mom uh, obviously knows she needs it and and uh, so it's just her and her mom doing it and um, but this is the first time they've ever done this these healings and um, anyway so uh, she was my sample person, which was really interesting to think about. Okay, clarity, direction, time management, and self-awareness of a 15-year-old. You know, I mean, what was your clarity and direct, sense of direction at 15, you know? So, I mean, ugh, what a luxury, you know, to have a healing on all that at 15. It's just mind-blowing. Uh, but anyway, so, so I looked at, you know, does she have a sense of clarity? Does she have a sense of direction? How's her time management? How's her sense of self? You know, be, and the angels really did want me to make her the sample person. So what she had, the energy blocks she had were just a more extreme version of what everyone else had, you know, in those places. So that was really interesting. Um, so she had uh, above the top of her aura. So like say here's the top of her aura. And then like, then there's the eighth chakra, which is an energy center that doesn't fit in the body. It stays way above and shines down like a gold sun, your eternal wisdom and healing energy. So the gold sun's like up here, the top of the aura is right here. So then you look in between the gold sun and the top of the aura. And she had some energy blocks from past lives that because sometimes you're like okay what does this 15 year old have to be so bummed out about you know in their little perfect life you know i mean a maybe their life isn't so perfect because they sponged up all their parents stress which does happen um but sometimes the parents are pretty balanced too so then it's like okay seriously no seriously like what does this 15 year old have to be so bummed about but it could be past lives you know energy blocks that they didn't finish clearing in a past life that you know is you know, triggered at different ages. So all of a sudden, you know, maybe they were happy-go-lucky at 12, but then, you know, between 12 and now, it's like all this past life blocked energy got triggered and now they feel like they're really messed up. So anyway, she had a big stack of energy blocks right here above the top of her aura, between the top of her aura and her gold sun, her eighth chakra. So that meant that everybody had that to some extent and that was blocking clarity and direction and self-awareness time management is more like third and seventh but all the other things can be up here too above the aura between the aura and the gold sun so so i helped everybody clear past life energy blocks that were there between the eighth chakra and the top of the aura so that was cool and um and then I, it was like toward of right towards the end so i combed through everybody's aura and all their chakras you know just all at once just trying to be real calming with gold light to unblock them all make them all like big enough so the spirit can fit in nicely you know just up and down so i don't use a doll when i'm doing the healing <laughs> so i'm just like imagining you know, everybody's energy field and 
and just using the gold universal healing energy to help everybody and then so if you do it for yourself just imagine you out in front of you and then your whole aura and your chakras are along here right along your spine and you just comb downward you know comb through your whole aura you know comb through your grounding you know comb through all the chakras seven through one and an interesting interesting uh, guided meditation recording I have that does a little bit of that like real quick do the whole space kind of quickly is um, called confidence it's a 15 minute recording it is a little trippy if you have a lot of stuff you're trying to avoid you know like if you if when you're honest with yourself you know that you're kind of avoiding like your entire childhood and you're avoiding you know all these things then don't do that meditation <laughs> But if you feel like you're a big super geek and you love, you know, uncovering things and healing yourself, then that's a nice recording because it, it does involve like a, a, an inner child healing where you heal a part of your wounded inner child. Um, but before and after that inner child part, there's really a very concise, you know, highly edited um, to be so concise, you know, a way where you're healing all your chakras at once and you're healing your whole aura at once. But anyway, that's what I did towards the end for everybody. Um, that confidence meditation is on page three of three of the free meditations on my website. And let's see. Oh, then again, I did that red grounding and brought up all the red earth energy so people kind of had a nice comforting you know red earth energy from the center of the earth and again it's just earth energy from the center of the earth that is set to the color of red you know any energy can be any color you know you just set it so everybody had nice comforting red earth energy uh, grounding at the end and uh, well the whole time but Kind of refreshed it at the end and then i had everyone uh get an angel blessing from their own angels just to finish the healing up so that's all so i hope that made sense i hope the recap video was useful to you and um i don't know whatever it is for you evening morning i hope you have a great day or evening and um Thanks for watching. And if you have any comments, uh, feel free to share them uh, below, uh, post them. And uh, if you want uh, to support the video and help people to see it and learn more, uh, give the video a thumbs up if you wish. And of course you can subscribe. Okay, bye.